People have raved about Cape Henlopen, and, and I understand why now. This is the day we're heading out to Cape Henlopen, and we just made the decision to not bring our bearded dragon because he is going through brumation right now. And that's kind of like bears for the winter where they hibernate. So it's kind of a hibernation, but um, they don't completely shut down. They just really slow down. So they don't eat, drink, anything. They just tuck themselves away for months, three, maybe four months, and then sleep for a bit so here he is he just decided to do this this morning so here so max is tucked away deep in his little hide cave that he loves so good night night we'll see you in a few months we'll be gone for about five days and we're just gonna leave him here at my in-laws and they're just gonna peek in on him and see how he's doing and he should be just fine it will be a little sad not bringing him this week uh, because we're so used to having him with us and he really loves to travel and he loves to hang out in the RV and look out the window. So we'll miss him, but we know it's the right thing for him. Hey, Reset family on this chilly November afternoon in Delaware. We are heading to Cape Henlopen State Park campground for the week. Our last local camping trip before we head back out on the road full time. Yay! We just decided to take this last trip, make sure all our systems are still working properly, um, and have a little fun, right? Have some fun. I camped as a Boy Scout at Cape Henlopen, and this is where we took the boys. Whenever we went to the beach, we went to Cape Henlopen. I figured, you know, since I had never camped in an RV and it's one of the most popular places, there was no way to get in in like an August or September time frame, but uh, we were able to get in now, so let's give it a shot. The beach will probably be a little chilly. Uh, it's supposed to be pretty cold this week, but that doesn't matter. We're that still going to have some fun. I also want to point out that it takes a lot of work <laughs> to just pack up your RV for the week and then come back and unload stuff. Remember we're at my in-laws and uh, it's a lot of work. I think we'd rather just be out full time. Right? Agreed. Even though it's a lot of work, it is definitely still worth it. And I know we'll have fun and create some more memories. This campground is open year round and is located in Lewis, Delaware, where the Delaware Bay meets the Atlantic Ocean. It offers a unique combination of nature and history with a beautiful coastal environment and a World War II military base. Hello. Hey. Our car passes are on the post. Oh, cool. That's what I didn't know. She's like, mm. okay. There's nobody here. This place is pretty empty. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What site are we? I don't know. That's what I'm looking up. Oh, we're looking on our email. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I have a signal here. That's nice. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's hope it remains. E19. I don't see the E loop. All I see is A, B, C, D. Okay. It's a pull through, but yeah. Yeah. We'll find it. Here we go. Somehow, somewhere. There are many options to camp, including 120 RV sites, 43 tent sites, and 12 cabin sites. Book early because this campground fills up quick in the summer. All RV sites include electric, water, a picnic table, and a fire pit. There's a camp store, laundry facility, a play area for the kids, and dump stations and trash receptacles are near the entrance. Which one? 19. It's painted on the ground. Oh, sweet. Okay. So it's that one? Yeah. Back-end RV sites are a little tight, but the pull-through site we had was perfect. This park has so much to offer. Beaches that you can walk or bike to from the campground, a fishing pier, miles and miles of amazing bike paths, a World War II observation tower that you can go up in, Fort Miles World War II Army Base, and on nature oh, side. We're level. Side to side we're level. But our slide, our gonna... is it going to hit the water? I don't know. It might. I don't know. We're nice and level, but you know, the wind is going toward our front. We also want sun on our solar, solar. panels. Okay. Even though we're plugged in, it's still, that's a DC charge. So let's push back a little bit. All right. See how it goes. 
we don't always stay in campgrounds. We live in this thing where we spend most of our time out west boondocking. Follow along on some of our other adventures. We are good. Some neighbors, they just brought us some wine in a box. Look at that. How neighborly we show up and that was so nice. That's, that's a good thought to bring something extra like that. So when you get to a campground or wherever you are staying, you could uh, make some friends and uh, bring over a nice tasty beverage. <laughs> really thoughtful. Thank you, Steve and Cheryl. Our boys have been learning and helping out more lately with setting up the RV and we're really grateful for that. Ever since I've lived in Delaware and known about camping in this area, people have raved about Cape Henlopen. And I understand why now. There's some hospitality here by, by the guests. That's yeah. really nice. Instantly, we have people come to say hi. So it's really sweet. One of Glenn's favorite things is to get up early in the morning and capture a beautiful sunrise. Now to explore the park. So behind me here is one of many batteries along this paved walkway that was probably used as a bunker to store uh, weaponry. So this is pretty cool. And Glenn told us a story. When he camped here, when he was a teen, uh, he found, I think their group found <laughs> kind of one of these bunkers. And I think around the backside, they may have found like a little entryway, cool hole in there. And I think they explored. So it's a neat story, but these are really cool. Check them out along the way. Next, we climb Tower 7, which is the only World War II observation tower open to the public. Sixty steps in, more to go! There are eight World War II watchtowers along the Delaware coast that were used to protect the Delaware Bay from attacking enemy ships or submarines. This tower is 75 feet tall, and at the top on a clear day, you can see 14 and a half miles of the coast and a panoramic view of the park. That is 115 steps, to be exact, going up this tower. And apparently there's like, I think I read 13 towers along, around here, <laughs> not just in the state park, but it's, Gosh, this is great. You get to see so much from here. It's a great water. It's really amazing. My favorite part about the, the towers is going down. Hello. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a comment and a like and please subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video. We walked through the Fort Miles Army Base and Artillery Park, which was a key piece of the nation's coastal defense during World War II. So here we have access to the beach right off the bike path between the campground where we came from and Fort Miles, and then down further is the bathhouse, the main entrance to get on the beach. Uh, but this one I thought we'd take because we haven't done it before, and we'll just head right out to the beach. Next up was the swimming beach located off the boardwalk from the bathhouse, which includes restrooms with showers and a concession stand. The entrance fee to the beach is included with your campground stay. Otherwise, it is $5 a day for Delaware vehicles and $10 for out-of-state. We visited in the off-season, so the bathhouse was closed, but there were bathrooms available in the Nature Center. We're standing in a very cool location, right at the end of the boardwalk at the bathhouse in Cape Henlopen State Park, and uh, it's beautiful here. But right behind me is what they call the point. We're gonna, we're gonna go check that out in a second. So let's go look at that. Here we are at the point. And this is where the Delaware Bay meets the ocean. It's quite windy today, but the sun is out. It's really beautiful. 
you can also see Delaware Breakwater, that lighthouse that's down off of that end. And if you peek around the other side, you can also see the Harbor Refuge Lighthouse. This is a great place to view birds, dolphins, seals, and just enjoy. You can bike or drive to the Nature Center, which is located near the entrance to the park. Here's a map of Cape Henlopen State Park. And we were just at the point right there. And then that's the bit of beach that sticks out far that I showed you. That was really cool to see in person today. We're at the Seaside Nature Center and this is also the place where you can rent bikes for the day if you didn't bring any because there's a uh, many many miles of wonderful bike trails around here. Let's go take a look inside this nature center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This nature center is small but super informative about all the wildlife that lives around here and in the local waters. Great for children, they had a little tank where you could touch the horseshoe crabs and that was really cool. But we learned a lot about the fish and everything around here. Check it out. There's also a trail behind the nature center that leads to a beach where the fishing pier is. And here's the bike loop from the nature center that takes you around off around the park. One big loop. One of the best and most beautiful spots in the park to watch all kinds of birds and raptors is from the Hawkwatch observation deck. It sits on top of an old army bunker which overlooks the Atlantic Ocean. The Hawk Watch program is in operation every fall in which volunteers count and report the numbers of migrating raptors. The last thing we checked out was the quarter mile long fishing pier that was originally built to support mine operations during World War II. Today it's open 24 hours for fishing in the Delaware Bay. You can also see the Lewis Ferry that goes back and forth to Cape May, New Jersey. We hope you enjoyed following along our time at Cape Henlopen as much as we enjoyed being here. If you ever make it through Delaware, make sure you put Cape Henlopen on your list. 